You know, Simon, I love being in the green room, by the way. I mean, this is this is like where the magic happens. And, you know, you are a legend in your own, by the way. You just really are. And if I read this bio, um, we may be here for the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> I really might. So, so do me a favor if you could, if you can. Um, in the green room, I like to just to get the narrative, like who is Simon T. Bailey, and really, what are you up to these days, my man? Well, first and foremost, I am the father of two amazing children, Daniel and Madison. Daniel, twenty-one, Madison, uh, soon to be eighteen, and that is my most important role in life. Uh, secondly, I simply exist to spark transformation, sustainable transformation in people all over the world. And so we do that every single day uh, through social media and through all the books that we've written. Fantastic. And for those folks that are tuning in today on this particular episode, um, what, should, what type of conversation should they expect from Simon T. Bailey? Wow. How do we begin to reset our mindset and just really begin to create the future and spark not only our transformation, but spark our personal reboot and get ready for where things are going. You, you know, Simon, there's so many folks out there that have never seen these times before. And um, these are very challenging times. Um, how, how are you staying focused during these times, man? You know what I realize is that when you go through a crisis or change, it doesn't come to break you, but it becomes to uh, reveal who you are at the core. And what happens when it reveals who you are at the core, sometimes you will end up in trauma or you will discover your treasure. So it's all a choice that you make in the midst of crisis. You know, when 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 companies are going through the crisis, uh, take a moment and and we're 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 in the we're in green room. I love having these real type of conversations. Um, I know that you deal with corporations, mm -hmm. and you get the opportunity to work with leadership, which is which is very very important. And I know that small business owners see ourselves as leaders as well. But but to the corporate persons out there right now, the executive, the vice president, the director, the administrator. Um, that, that's really trying to keep their, their focus during these times. Um, what has been your message based on some of the conversations you're having with some folks right now? Here are the three things I'm telling leaders right now in corporations. Number one, empathize and be authentic. When I say be authentic, show up and say, here's what I know today. Here's kind of what's going on in the organization because where there is a void of communication, people will create a story. So every leader, he or she, has begun to say, here's the real deal that's happening real time. Then the next thing they have to begin to do is say, guess what? I don't know how this is going to turn out. We may lay off next week, next month, next year. But I am going to be honest with you because I am concerned about the future as well. So we have to focus on today. You have to be just honest with people. I think that the, the, the next thing is communicate to your customers that don't pay us now if you can't. Pay us down the road. We want to take care of you and understand that serving is the new selling. So what is it that we can do? So we've been doing quick two-minute videos from some of the corporate clients that we work with for them to put on their intranet to really just calm people down. And I think the third thing is leaders every single day wake up and say, how do we create the future in the present? How do we create the future in the present? That sounds like an oxymoron, by the way. I'm just curious. Uh, can you can you can you kind of break that thing down for us? And, and we're in the green room. I know we got to get started. I see so many folks sure. out there. Carol's out there watching. What's going on, Carol? Samantha's out there. What's up, Samantha? John's watching. What's up, Kevin? Hey, my man from over at the Gaylord is on. It's always a pleasure, Tony. They're, they're tuning in right now as you're saying that. Um, and we got to get going in a minute. But but break that thing down for a moment. Create the future in the present. Talk about that. All right. So let me unpack this. Yeah, please, please unpack that for me. <laughs> when I talk about creating the future in the present, language is the software of the mind. So if we want individuals to think in a certain way, we have to be mindful of the language that we're using. So if we're using language of social distancing, crisis, the sky is falling, all of a sudden it creates this internal shutdown that prevents external execution. So what we have to think about, if the future is created in the present, what is the tomorrow that we want to have? We want customers, we want revenue, we want success. 
but it starts today in how we think, by what we say, and by what we do. So every single entrepreneur listening to me right now, you're creating the future by what you say today. And when you arrive into the future, you call it today, but everything that you did yesterday meets you in the future and says, welcome, we've been waiting for you. So if I want a better outcome, I have to be mindful that transformation is one inch from my nose. It's the words that are coming out of my mouth that is shaping perception, which becomes a reality. Wow. Perceptions have become a reality. I love that. You know, folks are showing in like Eric Heilig, who's out there in Orlando, by the way, not too far from you, by the way. Steve Hardison is out there in Phoenix is watching right now. So many other folks that are tuning in. You know, what is your, your, your not your big why? People ask that question a lot. But what mission are you on right now? Like, what is Simon's purpose in life? Very simple to spark sustainable transformation in individuals, CEOs, nations and systems, because when that happens, individuals discover everything they need to succeed is inside of them. Woo! Okay, when we come back. I got to get going. We do have a show to go, by the way. I love how you come out the <laughs> gate. We come back. We're going to talk to the one and only Simon T. Bailey. We're going to focus on one area, spark your transformation. You can have the life you want and you can have the business you want. And it is possible. With that being said, I got to get going, man. Tell me how to get going in five. I know four. It's the only part I get, Simon, that I love doing. Three, two, one. It's showtime. We'll be right back, ladies, with Simon T. made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shea Brown. Mic check, mic check. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yes. And they stay there. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower. Our mission is to inspire. And our mission is really provide you, you the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that you need in order to execute, I believe, three visions that you have for yourself. I believe first you have a vision for yourself the way you want to live, the clothes you want to wear, the food you want to eat. And it takes resources, which means it takes revenue. And then some of you out there, you have a vision for your loved ones. I'm blessed. Mother dear is still here. And I have the opportunity to take her to physical therapy, drop groceries. Well, at her door right now, (laughs) by the way, I'm not going inside. She won't let her own son inside. That's a topic for another time. But but some of you, you have um, you have a vision for your loved ones, the kids you want to send to a school of their choice. Some of you want to pay for your health care insurance. You want to write a check for someone else. It takes resources, which means it takes what? Revenue. And then others of you, you have a vision for the people you were called to serve. And imagine right now you didn't have any resources, whether you're a believer or not. I'm a believer. But imagine you're Noah in the Bible and you're sitting there and he has a vision from God that's so much bigger than him. There is no hammer. Well, there's no resources. What does he do? There's no nail. Well, there's no resources. What does he do? There's no wood and no team. What does he do? Can't execute the vision. And so that's what we're here for. Make sure you have the resources. So with that being said, we're here with the one and only Simon T. Bailey himself. And I want to jump right into it, Simon. As folks are tuning in, Kevin Williams, thanks a lot for joining. Yolanda Gardner is out there right now. Sakoni Prince and so many other folks. Look, in this time of where we are in the world, how is Simon T. Bailey staying focused in a time of crisis like this? Well, first of all, let me thank your listeners for taking time out of their busy schedule to join us. And thank you for this amazing platform that you have provided. I think there are three things that are top of mind for me 
is that when I understand who I am at the core, I recognize that crisis is a gift. That's number one. Number two, how I use this crisis creates number three, that is my tomorrow or my future. So every single day I'm waking up to focus on being a better version of myself than the day before. Now here's the thread that's running through all of that. Everyone listening to us has to understand that you can change the channel on your tell a vision because life is not a remote control. Woo, tell us a little more about that. So what I recognize is the moment you receive the input of media, and sometimes it is negative, if not all negative, it creates fear, worry, and stress. The more you continue to hear things that bring up for you fear, worry, and stress, it actually slows your brain down. Because when the brain is slowed down, it doesn't create neurogenesis, which is the process of growing neurons, which grows the brain. So when I am in fear mode, fear mode triggers worry mode, and worry mode has a first cousin called stress. And all of a sudden, I begin to shut down from the inside out. So what individuals really are, are being invited to do to say, wait a minute, I can change the channel and begin to tell myself a new vision of where I am going instead of being stuck by what others are saying. You know, Simon, as you, as you mentioned that, let me just um, let, me, let me ask a question and we'll get to some good stuff. Um, for those out there, you can you can share this video for it. You can pay this message for it. You have my permission and Simon's permission. You can hit the watch party button right now. You can hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, write these words, spark your transformation, hashtag Simon T. Bailey. Like, like right now, you want to pay this message forward. We believe in the giver's economy. The person out gives the competition, out earns the competition. And you can help someone else right now even if the message is not for you you can go and just hit the hit the share button right now hit the watch party button right now and write these words spark your transformation hashtag simon t bailey simon let me ask the question you talked about they can do this right now and i don't want to sound like i'm not sensitive but 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 what do you say to uh, the mom that's out there right now she's just been laid off not laid off she's working from home now so she's a full-time job working from home full time. She's an entrepreneur full time. Um, she has to take care, she has to be a wife full time. She has to be a mom full time. She's now a teacher full time. Oh, by the way, Simon, she's also a freaking school administrator. I had this conversation with someone just yesterday in all fairness, and she's like, Shay, I've got more going on right now than I ever had. I'm super stressed, and I'm also helping out at the church to deliver food and do so many other things. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, what do you say to that? And it could be a male as well. I don't want to sound biased, by the way. I just haven't been talking to a mom. Um, what do you say to that person? How did they spark their transformation? They can be brilliant during this time. That's a lot. I love this question because I get this question certainly often, especially now. And the first thing, I want to honor the mother that has taken on more roles that you didn't ask for and didn't see coming all of a sudden. The first thing I would invite you to do is to write down these numbers. And by the way, if you play these numbers and they hit, don't forget about me, all right? <laughs> but I want you to write down 1515 dash 7 dash 30 dash 90. 15, 7, 30, 90. Carve out the first 15 minutes of the day for you. Take that 15 minutes and chunk it down into three five minute segments. The first five minutes to meditate, get quiet second five minutes to read or listen to something that inspires you, the third five minutes to do something to move your body, exercise something, 15 minutes a day, because you already know that everybody wants a piece of you the remainder of the day. Here's how the formula works. 15 minutes a day creates a routine seven days a week. Seven days a week impacts 30 days, 30 days impacts 90 days. Now understand this, our blood cells transform or change every 90 to 100 days. Put that in context. There are four seasons in a year. There are four uh, uh, quarters in a year. So what you're doing is you're setting your intention by chunking it down with 15 minutes to a day to say, 
Here's how I'm going to control the next 30, 60, 90 days by focusing on me so that I become better for we or everyone else. Hmm. You know, I love what you're sharing here because this right here is applicable to anyone that's listening right now. Um, what about you talk about? I love the brilliant. I mean, I get the brilliance. I love it. Uh, my question really is, how does the person deal with? And this is this is real time. Um, I had four conversations like this recently where entrepreneurs um, have to make a call and the mm. call is to a contractor, let them know, I got to put this on hold. Although that money was feeding their family. I had another friend who laid off an assistant who had been working with him for four years now and, and said, hey, look, I'll bring you back. I just can't afford on a weekly basis because everything has been stopped for the next six months. And, and, and those are those are very challenging conversations and they linger in the back of your head. So my question is, um, what do you say to folks that have to do that? How do they deal with it, man, so they can still spark their transformation? So the first thing is your integrity and your character is all you have at the end of the day. And making that call to the contractor, to the person that was depending upon you, is a difficult conversation, but one that you need to have. And certainly, I just ask you to empathize and be upfront with them and tell them the truth. Because if you do, you will sleep better at night. And then say to them, I will keep you in the loop if something comes up, if there's an opportunity that we all can benefit from. But I have to tell you the truth right now. And when you do that, it's going to hurt them, but they will respect you because you didn't run and hide. Even if you have to make that call and then make another call to drum up business, it's putting that truth on the table so that you have internal alignment for external execution. You sleep better at night. And then when you do call a client, you don't come off sounding as if you're trying to chase a dollar. You'll be in flow to say, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? And you you talk a lot. You mentioned a lot of principles um, that you you hold true. Uh, talk about how during this time it's it's more important ever than to communicate with folks, whether that are home virtually, that maybe used to be right there in the office with you, right? So a good friend of mine used to be at WeWork, and it's, it's not about Shay Brown, but you're here. So that he asked me, say, Shay, you got to ask him. <laughs> so seriously, though, no, this is a real question, right? So he's at, at WeWork, and so he used to go there. We work. This team of four people, so it's not like a big company, but I believe it applies to big companies as well and says, hey, you know, how do you be effective when folks are at home? Do you need to bring someone in and have them talk to them once a week, once a day, you know, deliver video message? So talk about these principles can still be delivered no matter the format in this digital age. Yeah, I've been doing webinars over the last few days with companies uh, and individuals all over the country. The, the first thing I'm encouraging leaders and executives and, and team leaders to do is to have a video check-in call first thing in the morning, virtual coffee, five, 10 minutes. How's everyone doing? What's the game plan for the day? Number two, send uh, people messages throughout the day, obviously, uh, saying, just checking in to say, I'm thinking about you. Thank you for doing a great job. Let's meet up and do virtual lunch. And in that virtual lunch, make it casual. If people have family members at home, children, dogs barking, say, guess what? During that time, how about we put everybody on screen and just have a nice family virtual team lunch where everybody is now getting to know each other in just a personal way and say, hey, we're going to do it for 30, 45 minutes. And then that's it. And then the third thing at the end of the week, do a video roundup where everyone goes around, shares three things. What am I most grateful for? What did I learn this week? And how am I going to move our business forward next week? And do that video roundup because it keeps people connected virtually, even though they're not together physically. And then another little interesting thing was just talking with a client over in Romania. What would it be like at 5 p.m. on a Friday to have a virtual happy hour where everybody just connects, put some music on and let people just say, you know what, we got through the week. You know, Simon, that is like spot on. And you are giving away some of the best of the best, you know, not secrets, but what you're really sharing from your heart. And that's what I, I really admire about you. My question really is, why do you still do this, man? I mean, the world needs you now more than ever. You could be asking for a check right away. Like today, you're here to serve today. You didn't ask for 
a cash app right now. You didn't ask for a Zelle. You didn't say, wire me some money first. You said, Shay, there's a community and I can serve and it fits my schedule. I'm there. Why do you still do this when you don't have to, my man? Well, Shay, I, I wasn't planning to go here, but here we are. Mm -hmm. I failed as a father because I was so focused on climbing a ladder of perceived entrepreneurial success only to discover that my ladder was against the wrong wall and my home was jacked up. I was chasing money but had no meaning. I was pursuing power but had no purpose. I was choosing status over satisfaction and I was choosing success over significance. And, and the reason my situation was so bad, my daughter came into my home office one day and I was busy, had stuff going on. And she said, hey, daddy, I said, hey, baby girl. And I sensed she wanted to talk, but I was emotionally unavailable to her because I was chasing the check the opportunity, the deal. And I got on the plane and it dawned on me that I missed that moment with my daughter. So I came back home and I said, Madison, you wanted to talk to me? She said, daddy, it's okay. I said, no, it's not okay. Because if I don't change my behavior, you're going to marry a joker just like me. And I'm modeling something for your brother to be emotionally unavailable to you like I was your mother. And their mother said to me after 25 years of being married, she said, you give everybody the best of you, but you give us the rest of you, and I don't want the leftovers anymore. And what I discovered in that moment, I was telling people all over the world, here is how you be successful, but I was jacked up myself. And so what drives me now is I'm just trying to rescue a few people and encouraging them to keep the main thing the main thing. Build your life around who will be crying at your funeral. Very, very powerful. We come back in just less than two minutes. I'm going to ask uh, Simon T. Bailey to talk about Spark, your transformation. Um, he's kind of shared what's on his heart. He's shared conversations he's really having. We really appreciate that. For everyone out there, hit the share button right now. You, if Simon is doing a good job, just look right below the video and say, Simon, thank you. Just put Simon, we appreciate you. If you if you say, Shay, I can't type all that right now, just hit the number one. Just hit the number one. I said one and hit the enter button. Belton Shaw said he's out there for you, by the way. He keeps letting me know. They said, let him know I'm out here. Belton Shaw <laughs> is in the house. But make sure you hit that share button. And when you hit that share button, put spark your transformation. But in all seriousness, normally wait to the end to give a digital applause. We really do. But for now, say thank you, Simon Bailey. We appreciate you, Simon T. Bailey. Great job, Simon T. Bailey. You're looking great. He's down on Lando floor. That's why, that's why he has those cool colors on. He's down in his head instead of baby. But at this point, we're going to go over to... Uh, <laughs> We're going over to Raleigh, North Carolina, to the one and only Dr. Kinnett Thigpen. And she talks about embrace change, which I think is very relevant because as soon as we come back, less than two minutes, Simon T. Bell is going to break down Spark Your Transformation. He says, you can do it even now. I thought you had to put that on hold. He says, no, you can transform now. We'll be back in less than two minutes. Take it away, Dr. Kinnett. Hello, it's your girl, Dr. Kinnett Thigpen, also known as Dr. K, founder of Rise Women's Network. And Rise Women's Network is pleased to present to you Hashtag next sister up. I'm with you in the happy entrepreneurs tribe and today is my January 1st. Here's your thought of the week. Embrace change. When I look up the definition of change, it means to make or become different. So no wonder people get so bent up out of shape when it comes to change because if it means to become different, we've been taught from a very young age that different is bad. But what if we change our perspective of what change really is? You see, I remember when I was in a motorcycle accident and I wasn't able to walk. I wasn't able to brush my teeth or comb my hair. Talk about change. And for you, maybe there's been life events where you've experienced change. I mean, just look around. COVID-19 has caused change for many of us. But I think we should view change as something positive. It's about embracing, it's releasing, it's accepting, it's evolving. It's about growing, learning, and becoming. So I wanted to share with you three tips in order to embrace change. The first one is you have to be aware and acknowledge it. Stop being in denial and acknowledge the change that is there. Stop sweeping it under the rug. 
and acknowledge it. The second thing is we need to realize what we can and cannot control. And if you make a list of the things that you can and cannot control and compare that to the values that you hold for yourself, for your family, or for those that you serve, I guarantee you the things that are outside of your control are not in alignment with your values. And then the third thing that's important to do is to keep a list of all the changes that have occurred in your life. One, because it will show you that you have survived every change that has occurred. And number two, it will help for you to look back and see the solutions that you had and the resources that you had to get through the change in the past that will help you in the present. And so I challenge you this week, embrace change, embrace change. It's your girl, Dr. K. Make it a great day. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. And welcome back to the happy entrepreneur show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we're on a mission. And that mission is to empower. That mission is to inspire. And that mission really is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute the vision that you have for the people you will call to serve. We're talking to Simon T. Bailey. He is the man of the man. He has this, 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 this concept. Um, this methodology called Spark Your Transformation. Now, he has a whole lot of stuff going on. You can go Google Simon T. Bailey. I'm going to give you a site. You can connect with him. But but take a moment, if you would, uh, Simon, talk about Spark Your Transformation. Um, why did you create it? And, and who is it for, my man? The reason I created Spark Your Transformation is because I was holding on to things that served me in one season but did not serve me in another season. So here's the net net, let go so you can let it come. Mm. You can't let come unless you let go of what no longer works because what no longer works is your comfort zone. And when it is time for you to go into another dimension, you must release what has been holding on to you and that has served you, but has confined you. And now it's time to emerge from the cocoon so that I opportunities can come your way. So true success as an entrepreneur is not just about the push, it's about the pull, but it's how do I let go so I can let it come? How does someone let go? I mean, that's the next question that has to be top of mind to them right now. How do I, I let all of this go and just imagine it doesn't exist? Talk to us. Yep. All right. So number one, what are some of the things that no longer work for me or serve me, but no longer can grow with me. So sometimes entrepreneurs hold on to people who have a 10, um, I, I would say an eight by 10 dream or how they approach work, but you have a 50 by 60 dream and you're trying to come down to their world and they're not coming up to your world. So is it time to invite them to find their happiness elsewhere? That's the first thing. The second thing is if you are in a room where you are the smartest person in the room, are you still in the right room? Do you need to surround yourself with thinkers that challenge you into another stratosphere? So for example, I have a, a gentleman in my life that I'm fortunate to, to call a friend, and he mentioned a business opportunity to me, and it was so over my head, I didn't have a concept, but it stretched me to ask him more questions. Do you have individuals that are stretching you or allowing you to stay where you are? And then probably the third thing is, what would it be like to do an analysis of your finances? And I know businesses, uh, business owners do this, but I'm talking about doing a forensic analysis down to every subscription you buy, your fixed costs, your variable costs, and begin to say, what can I cut that no longer serves me so that I can make room for the investment I need to make? You know, you, you talk about doing that, by the way. You talk about spark your transformation. This is spot on. What do you say for the leaders that are out there? I know spark your transformations for, for leaders as well. Um, how do they lead in the midst of a crisis? Well, first of all, every leader listening to me has to understand we have just now shifted from employee experience, contractor experience to the human experience. So every leader has to think about how do I engage the whole person 
understanding that life has changed and there are complexities. Let's get into specifics. Number one, what is a person's learning style? How do they obtain information? Number two, what allows them to be their most successful self? If they can't come to a physical building nine to five, they're working from home, how do you add more flexibility in how the work gets done so that they can be the best version of themselves to those who are depending on them? Number three, customers that you have dealt with in the past, what is it that they need and how do you add value to them, not charging them more, but coming alongside them as a partner to say, what is it that we can do to help you be more successful? So it's not just about collecting a check, it's about building a relationship for life. So let's break this down because this is important. A relationship is how do I relate to the cargo in your ship. So wherever you are going on the ocean of life, customer, how do I come alongside and you remember me as a person that wanted to help you get down the ocean of new opportunity by not just seeing me as a vendor who wants an invoice to be paid, but as a partner who wants to help you grow? You know, for those folks that are out there right now, I'm going to ask uh, Simon T. Bailey about this whole serve and then sell. He mentioned that when he first opened up, we were in the green room. I couldn't let him leave that there, by the way. He just dropped that nugget. Shay, we now have to serve, and then we worry about selling. I asked him to unpackage that, but for those folks that are out there right now, here's how you can, here's how you can serve. Here's how you can pay this message forward. Hit the share button right now. And when you hit the share button, at the very top, put spark your transformation, hashtag Simon T. Bailey. And this is for another entrepreneur. This is for another single mom, another single dad, another husband or wife who are now all cooped up together, for lack of a better term. I know they want to be there. <laughs> Someone's I'm about to kill my kids. I'm joking. I'm joking. I shouldn't say that here naturally. Um, but they're there right now. And this message of spark your transformation from Simon T. Bailey um, will make the difference for them. It'll create the breakthrough. So, Simon, take a moment and step back. And before we get into sell and then serve, uh, take a moment and talk about spark your transformation. You talked about it from a business lens, although you did kind of tie it to a personal lens. But you say you can also have the life you want when you spark your transformation. Talk about from a human perspective, just the individual. So it starts with taking time to notice everyone around you. Give you a prime example. This morning I got up and this is going to seem so simple. I heard the birds for the first time singing. I, I've never heard the birds before but they've always been there. I just didn't hear it because I wasn't listening. So how do I understand the same letters that spell the word listen, spell the word silent? And how do I begin to listen to those around me? Not to respond, but listening to understand and recognizing that there's a difference between authentic listening and selective hearing. So if I really, really want to connect, how do I listen without judgment and find a way to hug people with my words by making them know that they are the most important person in that moment. Yeah. And what is something else that someone can do that this home now or, or in this new world to kind of not um, you can't manage time, but really to focus on the time choices with so many things going on. How does Simon manage all the different things he has to do throughout the day? Um, what's one of your strategies? So as you are transforming, you understand you can do it all time block. Specifically, look at 24 hours as your very own employee. <laughs> now, if we take eight hours off the table, that's 16 hours left because eight hours you should be sleeping and resting. So with that 16 hours, how do I get the most value out of that 16 hours by chunking that down hour by hour? How will that hour make you better? How will that hour produce for you? So that can be reading a book. That can be making sure you exercise. That could be um, connecting with family and friends virtually. How do I make every hour work for me? So it's time blocking your day. Can you, can you take a moment just to expound a little more on that? Because this right here, this has been a, a, a challenge uh, for myself. <laughs> so maybe I'm a little selfish and I'm like, okay, I got a time block. Um, what's the, can you just give us this one more layer to that? And I want all of you to, to watch with new eyes right now. I want you to listen with new ears because here's the person that coined the phrase, not only brilliant, but spark your transformation. But that means you have to do something. 
And so I'm trying to get him to peel the onion a little bit and say, in the midst of everything going on, all these changes, here's how to make the best choices with the times that you block. This is very, very important. He does this. This is applicable to leaders, small business owners, and individuals as well. And that's what I like about Simon. He makes a difference in the world. This is what I have discovered with all of a sudden not being on a road on a plane, all of a sudden home. So I had to specifically say at 10 p.m. at night, I'm shutting it down and I'm going to bed and I will sleep. And then I will get up at 5 a.m. And at 5 a.m., I'm going to take that 15 minutes to work on me first. All right. And for me, it's a little bit longer. I take up to an hour because I exercise and try to get ready for the day. And then I get ready for the day as if I'm about to go to an office, even though I'm, the office is in my home. I'm not going anywhere, but I want to be show ready because I may get a call. Can you do a podcast? Can you do an interview? Can you be here? So I just want to be ready if and when those things happen. But then the other thing that I'm very intentional about is what am I reading? I'm not going to turn on the news and I'm not going to do email first because turning on the news drains your, your positivity, turning and, and going to email, you literally get sucked into a vortex of I got to respond, I got to respond. No, 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 no. What you're doing is you are um, literally it shields up. You're blocking out anything that can prevent you from being your most productive self. And I'm a morning person. I'm a big sleepy head after a certain uh, time of the day. So I know my best time of the day is in the morning. Then after I have done that, I then say, okay, who are the people I need to call? What are the emails I need to respond to? What's the proposal I need to send to? If I've had a client that's canceled a contract, how do we move them from cancellation to postponement? And how do we defer payment instead of sending a check back to them for what they have paid us? So it's thinking through. Then if I have conference calls with the team, what is the agenda? So very, very specific. Now, when people, you will get a text from somebody say, hey, can you talk real quick? I can talk if it's not an emergency, no one's dying. I can talk at this time because you have time block when you're going to return all your calls. When you do that, you prevent people from cherry picking out of your day. And then you get to the end of the day, you're like, where did the time go? What just happened? It's because you were disciplined and regimented to be your most productive self. Wow. I love it, man. That's that's spot on. I love the whole part of my return calls at this time. Sounds easy. Sounds simple, but it has to be executed. Take a take a moment before we go to break and talk about the the power of, of discipline in your transformation. Uh, take a moment. Talk about that. Why is that important? People don't fail because of lack of focus. People fail because of broken focus. And when your focus is broken, all of a sudden time slips into the future, an old song back from the 70s, right? So when I'm very focused, I'm asking myself this question, is this the highest and best use of my time? That is the, the self-accountability question you're asking yourself. Is this conversation? Is this email? Watching the news? Is this the highest and best use of my time? And if it is, great. If it's not, then you know what to do. I love it. When we come back in just a moment, we're going to be speaking to the one and only Simon T. Bailey. We'll be talking about the importance of today is your January 1st and how you can start no matter where you are. You're all tuned in right now. And I want to encourage you to do two things. One, look right below the video. Look right below the video and write your number one takeaway. What's one golden nugget you have right now? Just, just do that. I know these videos go viral. I get it. But don't do it for that. Do it because you want to bless someone else. And then hit the share button. I've said that a few times because we believe in the giver's economy. The person that out gives the competition, out earns the competition. And so you can share this and you can bless someone else. When you hit the share button, just do me a favor. Just, just make sure you put spark your transformation, hashtag Simon T. Bailey. He's the one and only Simon T. Bailey. We'll be back in less than two minutes. We're going over now to the one and only Rob House. Rob House is down in Laurel, Merle, and he says, be present where you are. Simon's present with us right now. We'll be back in less than two minutes. Hey guys, right. me and Daddy are here. All right, I, um, I'm doing a I video. Got a question. No, it's not a question. This is a video where I'm telling people something. I'm telling them that this today is their January first. Today is your January first. Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, because today is the only day you got. Because tomorrow's not promised, and yesterday is gone. 
So the reason why today being your January 1st is significant because it keeps you from procrastination. Procrastination is the destroyer of dreams. Yeah, it's the destroyer. It's the killer of dreams. So take action. Be present where you're present. That's the real gift. Be present where you are present. That is the real gift. Today is your January 1st. Say, say today. Today. Say today is your January 1st. Today is January 1st. Say it loud. Today is January 1st. That's it. Don't forget it. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission really is to provide you, that's right, you the entrepreneur, you the business owner, you the person who gets up every single day to make a difference in the world for someone in their business or someone in their life to make sure you have all the resources necessary to execute that vision. And we're going into a segment for those folks that are out there right now called Today is My January 1st. And Simon, Today is My January 1st represents one of our core beliefs that we have and that anytime throughout the day that you can make a decision, and there's hundreds and thousands of decisions you can make, thousands of decisions a day, you make a decision that could forever change the trajectory of your life. You either go to the gym, or in this case, you work at home, work out at home, or you sit on the couch, right? Um, you either eat hamburgers and french fries, or you'll go put up the refrigerator, and inside there is some broccoli, there's some kale, there's some Brussels sprouts, there's some cool stuff in there, and that's a January 1st moment. So it's a do-over, it's a restart, it's a your past doesn't equal your future. For all those folks that know about that, look below the video right now and write those words, today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. Simon T. Bailey, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? What does it mean to you? Uh, when I hear that, the first thing I think about is how do I love myself first? Uh, and then how do I love my children, Daniel and Madison, by maybe writing a letter to them or sending them a heartfelt text to let them know that I believe in them and I am so proud of them and being intentional about that. Yeah, absolutely. And what was your January 1st moment for you, Simon T. Bailey, where you decided you were going to plant your flag, you were going to draw a line in the sand, and you were going to make being an entrepreneur work for you? In 1999, I was in Paris, and Disney had sent me there. I had worked for Disney, and they had sent me to Paris to design a leadership program uh, for a thousand leaders out of Barclays Bank out of London. And while I was there, I was teaching the program and Lion King had just come out. And I said, remember who you are. You are more than what you have become. Like something just came over me. And it was in that moment when I said, wait a minute. I went back to my room that night in Paris and I asked myself three questions, my hotel room. I said, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What would I do if no one paid me to do it? what makes me come alive? And that third question came out of a book I was reading at the time by an author named John Elridge in his book, Wild at Heart. John says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs are people who come alive. That was my January 1st moment. Mm, okay. And you know, we've talked so much about transformation. Even folks that are writing today is my January 1st. They're really excited like they were back on December 31st, by the way, after a couple of drinks on the back of a napkin, they started writing down their resolutions. And I don't know if you know this, Simon, but January 17th is National Dish Your Resolution Day. Like y'all can all go Google that. National Dish Your Resolution Day is January 17th. And some folks gave up before then. <laughs> my question to you really that makes it so, so really important here is... How does Simon T. Bailey tell his clients to be consistent, to hashtag stay the course? We've heard before that consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Having said that, we all, myself included, we struggle with consistency. Yeah. So there are three things that I tell clients. Number one, make a daily choice by being intentional to do something a little bit better today than you did yesterday. So sometimes for its executives, it's writing that handwritten note, it's picking up the phone, it's calling to say thank you, not just to ask somebody for something else. Second thing is throughout the day, finding a way to reach out to a customer and say thank you and just listen to them. Is there anything I can do for you? And scheduling it as an appointment. 
being intentional about that. And then the third thing is to carve out time to just think. So many executives and so many leaders that I talk to are so busy. They have things going on. But what I've discovered after interviewing thousands of high performers, executives, entrepreneurs, they have a way of carving out time to think. It can be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but they do it every single day. And they either capture it on their, their phone, they write it down, or they make a note somewhere to say, hmm, here is something that I discovered today that I need to add or share that will help move life and business forward. I love it. You know, you've had opportunity to interview many folks. You've had so many mentors along this journey. My question would be, what's one lesson that you learned from any of your mentors in your life journey that you could share with us that we could take away from? Yeah, one of the life lessons that I've learned uh, from really two people that have impacted my life, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, uh, who wrote Think Rich, <laughs> a Black Choice, mm -hmm. phenomenal, often talks about continuing to learn and never stop learning because the moment you stop learning, you stop living. And when you stop living, you stop growing. And when you stop growing, you start dying, right? Um, I think the other person, George Frazier, who I, I am so grateful for the impact that Dr. George Frazier has had on my life, uh, he has often talked about assets and liabilities and how do you begin to look at what you do through the lens of is this an asset that will help me grow or is this a liability that will help me that will keep me back and so i'm so appreciative uh, to them for their impact on my life you know talk for a moment if you can you mentioned earlier we're going back to the business owners out there the entrepreneurs and also the executives who run companies you talked about the importance of serve and then sell as part of this spark your transformation, which I love that you're doing, by the way. We're going to tell folks how to connect with you in a moment. They're already Googling you, by the way. <laughs> they already typed in <laughs> Simon T. Bailey. We're going to get to you exactly where to go find Simon T. Bailey in a moment. But talk about that, Will, if you will, for a moment. Service and then sale. All right. So when we truly serve, it then gives us the opportunity to sell, but we sell through the service. So let's look at SPARK as an acronym for a moment. If we are to take care of customers and grow our business, the S stands for how do we see them through the lens of a guest? How do we exceed their expectation and not go the extra mile? That was the 20th century. It's about going the extra inch. Then the P is how do we personalize that experience? So when you ever look at Netflix or Amazon, they personalize the experience by saying, hey, people who purchase this also purchase that. It's proximity marketing. The A is being anticipatory. How do we anticipate the needs of the customer, not just sell them? So when you pull up to the Ritz Carlton, the doorman will ask, what is your name? By the time you hit the front desk, they're saying, Shay, welcome to the Ritz Carlton. And you're like, what? how did you know? It's because of anticipation. And then the R is how do you respond with the appropriate service? People don't care what happened. They all they want to know is if you hear it, you own it. Don't pass the problem on. So how do we become uber responsive in handling issues when they come up? And then the K is how do we keep customers loyal through acts of kindness? Research says that a waiter will receive a 21% higher tip when they leave just two minutes. So it's doing the little that becomes a lot over a long period of time that moves you from selling to serving, but you're serving in the cell. Mm, I, I love it. Serving in the cell. Take a moment and um, share with folks, where can they best connect with you as we come down the home stretch? And then after you do that, I'm going to ask you a, a question really for those folks that are listening right now. What are what are some of the themes that you're sharing with corporations right now and our companies? And I know you're doing a lot of webinars, but first tell them where they can best connect with you. Sure. They can go to Simon T, T like terrific, Bailey.com. Okay. One more, one more time. What is it again? Simon T. Bailey dot com. Okay, I'm typing in it. Now, for those folks that are out there, let's all open up a browser. Nothing personal, Simon. Sometimes these websites don't work, by the way. Um, so, you know, technology happens. Things happen. So everyone type in Simon WWW and someone write this right below the video. Here's how you can help as well. Look right below the video and write the words WWW dot. What is it again, Simon? Simon T. 
Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y.com. Okay, okay. So I have verified, it looks like I've, oh, that's not it. I verified that the site does work. Okay. So once they land on the site, they got to shift your brilliance, which we'll talk about in a minute. And here's the site where they can connect with you. Take a moment and talk about what is shift. It's right there in the front, man. So we got to ask you the question. I mean, it says shift your brilliance. They're looking at it right now. Everyone go over to the website right now. Everyone make sure the website works on your browser. Go over there now. Simon, talk about shift to brilliance. What is it all about and who is it for, my man? Well, the world has changed as we know it. And now men and women have to think about shift. See how I fit tomorrow. The acronym, see how I fit tomorrow starting today. So how do we look at your brilliance, your insight, your potential, your genius, those who you've served? And this is for leaders. This is for employees. This is for entrepreneurs. How do I shift to brilliance? So there are 12 weeks, 12 lessons where I have literally compressed 30 years of learning. And I've worked with 1,800 organizations in 49 countries to really extract what are the key, the, the key kernels of truth that allow people to shift to brilliance and become their best version of themselves? I love it, man. We're looking at it, by the way, and we're looking at this, this mantra here. You got to talk to that, and then we'll, we'll close out and let you allow. Simon's agreed to have his closing comments. I know y'all love the closing comments. Some people don't want to do that. He's already said he'll have a closing comments. So I'm going to ask him about this right now, and then we'll take a two-minute break, and then he'll close us out, and we'll be done. But changing lives is my purpose it's like breathing air. You can't leave us just there hanging. Uh, take a moment and talk about why that's like the center of the page and why that's so near and dear to you, my man. What I discovered, the greatest tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy in life is to be alive and not know why. So when I have a why, I understand that change is your friend, not your foe. Change is a brilliant opportunity to grow change or be changed by change. I literally quit my job at Disney, cashed in my entire 401k with significant Disney stock to literally do what I love because 30 years ago, some people went to work and they settled for a chair, a check and a cup of coffee in cubicle farm and said, I am tired of being stuck. And what I recognize here is the change in the invitation to shift into your destiny and become the best version of yourself. I love it, man. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting super pumped, man. I'm getting super pumped over here. Um, before we go to break and you have your closing comments, uh, talk about some of the messages you're sharing. If someone's out there and they're an executive, um, they're a vice president, they're an administrator, they're looking at bringing someone in for their organization because you do that for companies. But also, mm -hmm. this is applicable as well for the small business owner who's now an office has been dispersed, whether they have 10 folks or 50 folks are dispersed all over. There's some things that you're doing that's really making a difference and, and it's having a lot of impact and it's helping folks not only calm down, but to be more productive and not only spark, but have the transformation. That's why I like what you do. You say spark your trans spark your transformation, then only spark mm -hmm. it but they transform. So my question to you is uh, what's some of the messages you're sharing so they can hear that. And for those folks who need to contact you, there was right on the page. Can y'all bring that back up for them? Yeah, there was right on the page. There it is right there. Changing lives is my purpose. And there's even a button that you can click right there. There's a button you can click right there, but talk about what you're, what you're, the message you're sharing, man. So they have some frame of reference. Yeah. So the first thing we're teaching leaders is how do you shift your brilliance and lead differently? Because uh, how, how you led in time past will not work for where we are as a world. Second thing is how do you hold remote teams accountable? What are some specific things that you can do to still drive value? And then how do you partner with your clients by uh, sparking how you serve them through five principles that create customers for life? How do you help them become your unofficial marketing department right now by branding the moment? So those are some of the themes we're sharing with customers right now. I, I love it, man. I love what you're doing. If you're out there right now and then you are, maybe your um, the person you work with is not listening right now. If they aren't, go ahead and hit the share the video to their page, but then also go ahead and contact them and say, look, let's take a look at Simon T. Bailey. He didn't know I was going to do all this, by the way, but, <laughs> but here's a man who has a heart to give. He has a heart to serve. And it was ever a time we need his message. Now is that time. When we come back in less than two minutes, uh, Simon T. Bailey is going to close us out. 
He's going to give us his final thoughts to help empower and to inspire you to be more, have more, and not only do that, but walk in your brilliance. I don't want to take his thing, but also spark that transformation. <laughs> you, know, you know, Simon, you might not know this, by the way. You might not even remember this, but we met at an NSN conference about yes. 10 years ago, and you was on that stage. I was like, oh, my God. It was the first time I met you, and then I came up to you, and I was broke as a joke. You probably remember this, by the way. I was broke as a joke, and I was there struggling as an entrepreneur, man, but I, I made my way there. I had to be at that conference down in Disney. By the way, it was beautiful. Yes. And I saw him and he was selling these books. He had three books and I didn't have only had the money to buy one. He said, look, you get this book here. I'm gonna give you two. He didn't know I didn't have the money. He just blessed me right there. They were paperback books, those little thin books. And that was like almost 12 years ago, wow. Simon. And I was like, I was just a young whippersnapper <laughs> back then. I was like, this guy is giving up two books. He's like, crazy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I took those paperbacks books home. I'm in brilliance, read it and was highlighting it. And I never forgot that moment wow. that you gave. Wow. And you didn't say, give wow. me another 20 bucks. You didn't do that at all. You just gave. And you're the same person today um, that you were there. And there was probably several hundred folks there, about a thousand plus people there. Mm -hmm. You're the same mm -hmm. now that you were there. And that's what I admire about, about you, man. You're here wow. giving. So that made a difference for me. And it made me always remember that no matter where I'm at, to just give first. And that's why I wow. created that mantra. Don't chase the money, Shay. Add value and the money will chase you. I got that from you, that's man. It. I was there right that day and I wrote wow. that thing down. <laughs> And I've held on to it this whole 12 years. And I didn't know I was going to say that, but I wanted to let you know that, man, in all seriousness, because the guy you guys hearing is the person you really want to connect with. With that being said, we got to go take a commercial, by the way. We're going over to Kim Warren Martin, Dr. Kim Warren Martin down in Little Rock, Arkansas. We come back in less than two minutes. Simon T. Bell is going to close us out. Kim Warren Martin says, make progress, not excuses. Hmm. Good time to hear that message. We'll be right back. Hello, hello there, happy entrepreneurs. Today is your January 1st, and you guys are all awesome in my book. This is Dr. Kim Warren Martin, founder of Successful and Fulfilled, bringing you my thought of the week here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. This week's thought is make progress, not excuses. Tony Robbins once said, there are only two options, make progress or make excuses. Now, we've all made excuses at some point in our lives or in our business. But if you happen to be someone who's moved past making excuses and certainly letting them hold you back, kudos to you. Thumbs up. But if you're struggling and lacking motivation, here are three things you can do to motivate or inspire yourself to take action. Number one, think about a successful person you look up to and ask yourself, what would that person do? For example, what would Oprah do or what would Mark Cuban do? One thing you know is they wouldn't make excuses because excuses don't make progress and no progress means no money. Number two is focus on why you got started in business in the first place. Examine how close you are to your original intent. This is more about the what, not the how. What you want to accomplish in your business should be clear, even more clear now than then. The how may vary over time as technology changes or tools change, but always keep sight of your vision and your mission. And finally, you can go to the nearest mirror, look yourself straight in the eye, point at yourself and say, man, you got this, girl, you got this. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. And sometimes we just need to see that we believe that we can do it on the inside without outside approval. So do it for yourself and the people you're called to serve. Plus, know that I believe in you and I know you got this. This is Dr. Kim Warren Martin, founder of Successful and Fulfilled with the thought, make progress, not excuses. Until next time, make it a wonderful day. Back over to you, Shay. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. And welcome back to the happy entrepreneur show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission really is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with the resources that are necessary to execute the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And we want to take a moment to thank the one and only Simon T. Bailey. We want you to connect with him at www.simontbailey.com. He showed up for one reason and one reason only, and that is to transform your life transform your business. One of the reasons I wanted to have him here on this very special broadcast is that one of our, our core beliefs is the results that show up in your life are just as important as the results that show up in your bank account. And that's one of the reasons why Simon Bailey took so much time to make sure that your life is in order. And then you saw him focus so much on the business. 
and he makes a difference for those folks that are out there. So Simon T. Bailey, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. Um, we need this message always, but we need it now more than ever. And you brought it to us. So thanks, my friend. I appreciate it. I just gave the guy a call, by the way. I just gave the call, guy a call. Like, I wish I could say it was his plan. And he said, Che, I'm there. If they need me, I'm there. And I so appreciate you clearing your schedule, man, and making this possible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. For everyone out there, hit the share button one more time. If you hit it before, hit it again. If you're watching on the podcast or I, iTunes or I'm sorry, Apple TV or Amazon Fire or Roku, take the link and then copy it into social media and just put spark your transformation. Hashtag Simon T. Bailey. Because he's on this move and he's created this movement and we're going to do this thing together. We're going to make it happen. Over to you, Simon T. Bailey, to give your final thoughts um, to close us out, man. We certainly appreciate you. There will never be a perfect time for you to become the person you might have been. This is the moment, this is the time when you realize a job is what you're paid to do, but release your brilliance is what you're made to do. Go for it. Wow, go for it. With that being said, thank you so much, Simon T. Bailey. I want all of you to know that watching, you're amazing, you're incredible, and you all have so much brilliance inside you. And for you, the best is still yet to come because today is your January 1st. You're going to transform your life. Today is your January 1st. You're going to transform your business. And today is your January 1st. You're going to spark that transformation. And you're going to change lives, have more meaning. The money will come, have more impact. The income will come. As my good friend Delator Manil will say, you're going to make a dollar and a difference at the same time. With that being said, God bless. We wish you success. Thanks a lot, Simon. And always Thank remember you. that time is long, but life is short. Enjoy the moment and make the most of it. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the building, yes. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.